Cosine error explained. In today's video, we're going to discuss best practices for indicating why cosine error is not really a big deal, the cosine correction factor, and the pear-shaped contact point. Before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. Cosine error can occur with a plunge indicator as well as a finger type indicator. We're going to start off with a plunge indicator because it's easiest to demonstrate. Cosine error occurs on a plunge indicator when the plunge indicator is not perpendicular to the surface. On a dial test indicator or finger indicator, cosine error occurs when the stylus is not parallel to the workpiece. For this demonstration, we set the plunge indicator at 30 degrees. For this example, we're going to set our plunge indicator at 30 degrees. I have my plate protractor set to 60, which will put 30 degrees at the top of the triangle. Okay, I've placed a 1 inch gauge block here because I'm running off the edge of my granite plate. Let's turn that around. We're set to zero. So now I'm going to add a 100 thou gauge block to this stack. And our stack moves a little bit over 115 thou. If we follow along with the previous demonstration, we know that whenever we have a cosine error, the length actually increases compared to the amount that we actually lift the indicator up. We put a 100 thou gauge block underneath and the indicator moved 115 thou. This is important information to know because if we knew we were set at 30 degrees, and we knew the indicating reading was 115, we could calculate that we only moved 100 thou up by using our scientific calculator, typing in cosine 30 degrees times 115 would equal 100 thou. Now let's try a demonstration with the dial test indicators or finger indicators. Both bodies of the indicator are at 30 degrees. The one on the right hand side here, the tip is at 30 degrees and the one on the left hand side is at about five degrees. This is a 10,000 shim. The one on the right hand side moves up approximately 12,000. And the one on the left hand side moves up 10,000. So ideally, you want your, your tip to be parallel with the surface or as close as possible to eliminate any cosine error. Best practice is to keep your indicator tip parallel with your work surface. If we look at the first indicator, the body and the tip are parallel to the workpiece. The second indicator, the body is at about 30 degrees and the indicator tip is parallel to the workpiece. So now let's put a 5,000 shim underneath. And the indicator moves 5,000. Let's take a look at the next one here. It's right on the edge. 5,000 shim underneath, the indicator moves 5,000. So the moral of the story is, and it's important, best practices that you leave the indicator tip parallel to the workpiece that you're going to measure to get a true measurement reading. Why is cosine error not a big deal for 90% of measurements? First of all, you know about cosine error, so that's half the battle gone. Most of the measurements you're going to be doing are comparative measurements. So if you're indicating a four-jaw chuck or you're checking parallelism, that's where most of your measurements are going to lie. It's very rare that you need a true actual measurement. Now you say, but I do need an actual true measurement in some cases. How do I get that? when I can't keep my indicator arm parallel with the workpiece. Well, you can use or apply the cosine correction formula. Here's an example. I have my indicator stylist or probe set to 30 degrees. My indicator readings 5 thou. My correction factor for cosine 30 is 0 
times 5,000, which is going to give me a corrected measurement of 4,000 3 tenths. If you look at the chart on the side, uh, there's different numbers for different uh, angles, and it's just a factor using the cosine. I had been hearing a lot about these pear-shaped contacts that eliminate up to 36 degrees of cosine error. The only place that I could find any information on these was from Verdic. It's a company based out of England. Apparently Starrett and Michitoyo also have them, but I've not been able to find any information on them. If you'd like to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. If you want to join in on the conversation, please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you have not already, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thank you for watching my video and have a great night.